this is called dhobi nut tree grassland mm -hmm. ecosystem is such that fire is part of its growth if you had come a month earlier you would have seen the whole tree would have been pink like this mm -hmm. this is the burg dhatti anything which gives seeds tell me i'll be happy to send those seeds to you uh, this is uh, semicarpus and we have several uh, forest uh, wild trees in this patch also this was the patch which we first took up for forest uh, forestation mm -hmm. 2014 we took up most of these plants are 10 years old so we have their seeds and next generation plants coming up from this in particular this is uh, semicarpus uh, anacardium uh, you can see the flowers you can see the birds and uh, post first rain the lush green uh, leaves of this. this is an interesting soap sud it is called you can see a, a frothy kind of thing that is actually a nest of a insect oh that in not nest actually Uh, the insect lays its eggs in that uh, to prevent the uh, small ones being eaten by predators okay so no bird will want to go through this it's called soap sud mm -hmm. soap sud insect uh, so that that, that insect preferably uh, no, it's this there everywhere or? but this tree i see lots of it in the beginning of first rains first rains okay. of course you can see it in many uh, amongst the grass also you will see that mm -hmm. and lush green large leaves shows the health of a plant yes. health of a tree for me so this is the, the flower i guess this is called a semicarpus anacardium or uh, dobi nut tree or marking nut tree basically it gives a acidic secretion the uh, seed mm -hmm. that uh, it's used as a marker traditionally the dhobis used to use the marker to differentiate different people's uh, um, the clothes belonging to different houses oh. in the same one village oh, okay uh, or one uh, community so this is called dobi nut tree and beautiful thing is there are only two trees in the world two species one is anacardium uh, occidental uh, oriental occidental that is this that is our cashew and uh, this is uh, the other one uh, semicarpus anacardium uh these are the only two trees which have seed outside the fruit oh here i can uh, see that right now i don't know if there are any seeds now uh here is here i can see right oh you can see one yeah, oh, yeah yes yeah. yellowish color see. the seed is outside the uh, fruit yeah. even this semicarpus anacardium also is like that semicarpus means that only mm -hmm. the seed will be outside the fruit uh i mean not a very common thing <laughs> so i thought this is a nice uh, thing of course edible fruits are edible uh, seeds are not edible for this but mm -hmm. there seeds are edible in the cashew cashew <laughs> yeah that's the more valuable thing this is our uh, fire line as i told uh, normally what happens that's outside our fence mm -hmm. outside our land uh there is you can see the biomass there yes. so people put fire there means mm -hmm. i mean this not of course there are reasons why they put because they feel the biomass if it burns the next grass which comes is healthier more lush green so the cattle loves to eat them oh. so they put fire that's what i was telling from beginning you know this whole place initially was a uh, grassland grassland mm -hmm. ecosystem is such that fire is part of its growth it grow it, the, every year fire happens the lot of grass die that's why there are no trees mm -hmm. uh, and then the new grass which comes supports much many more cattle much many more uh, sheep and other things so people put fire there now of course we no more like a grassland it's all agricultural land so in between agricultural land we are trying to grow trees so when the fire when the when these shepherds normally put fire outside it comes inside all over so initially all this biomass lot of it got burnt uh, so then we real we learned our lesson and now what we have done is this uh, line you can see along the bund you can see some soil kind of thing you don't yeah, see yeah. you don't see soil open soil in our land anywhere except at this boundary mm -hmm. because we have, we keep it clean by sweeping all the biomass from this so that it work it acts like a fire breaker even if there is fire outside we don't want it to come inside sweeping for all fire cars uh, along no along the boundary wherever it is attached to the road adjacent road. to the road okay okay because that's where we have fire problem for mm -hmm. that side there is no problem of fire mm -hmm. because that side also is agricultural land 
whereas uh, the portions, two of the portions which are adjacent to the road, um, fire is likely to come. So that we prevent that. This is another nice tree. This is called uh, uh, Swetenia chloro chloroxylon Swetenia. Uh, it's a vulnerable tree mm -hmm. in uh, IUCN list. This is of course Terminalia catapa. Uh, Which one? This one. This one. Badam. 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 Uh -huh. That is uh, Shivni or uh, Melina arborea. Ah. Uh, it's a very hardy tree. Previously, it was used for railway sleepers. This is Cordia mixa. Challe Hannu, we say in Kannada. Okay. This one. Mm, these are really, uh, this uh, Cordia mixa is really endemic, means really uh, local tree. Mm -hmm. uh, this is another uh, tree which is uh, Sagde, it's called in Kannada. Uh, you can see there is a pinkish tip there, I mean the pinkish uh, tender leaf. Uh, if you had come a month earlier, you would have seen the whole tree would have been pink like this. Mm -hmm. So it's the characteristic of this tree, it's called uh, Schlashiora oleosa. Uh, so this is Sagde or uh, uh, I forget the other Kannada name, but it's called Sagde in Kannada. Yeah, botanically slash your oleosa. So this is the Shivani, right? This is Shivani, another Shivani, Melina arborea, major bee attractor. Mm -hmm. This is uh, red uh, rosewood. 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 Yeah, bee tamara. Bee tamara. Bee tamara. Rosewood. Uh, Dalbergia latifolia. So many trees here, you can see those uh, Sterculia urens, uh, Semicarpus uh, anacardium, Bilpatre, uh, that is uh, Queen's flower, what is that? Lagistromia speciosa, mm -hmm. uh, there is uh, Honne Indian Kino, mm -hmm. Pterocarpus uh, marsupium. Here and I yes, can see a lot of uh, this one, seed droppings or fruit droppings, right? Yeah, these are all fruits of uh, uh, Melina arborea. Mm -hmm. uh, it, as you can see, it produces a lot of these uh, fruits. Once it uh, starts fermenting, you will see lots of butterflies coming for this. <laughs> what do you do these uh, seeds on? Right now I mean, we you don't do collect, anything, uh, but yeah, I collect people who ask, who are interested in growing these, I distribute, share with them. Okay. The seeds. Anybody wanting, uh, you seen the various trees, anything which gives seeds, tell me, I'll be happy to send those seeds to you. Okay. Again, you can see the termites which are yeah. <laughs> uh, taking over. This is, uh, you see, this is the true Ashoka. You can see this is the characteristic uh, Ashoka. tender leaves. Ashoka. Ah, Saraka, Saraka Indica. Indica. Yes. True Ashoka. Sita Ashoka. But uh, this is a very beautiful tree. Very, it's an evergreen tree. And uh, initially I knew it, but then I love the tree so much that I came and planted it here. Okay. Uh, and I had not watered them, watered it. So you see, this was planted in 2009. So it's 2009. 2009. Oh. Which means it's 16 year old, but it's not doing very well. Very stunted growth because okay. clearly it's an evergreen tree, which, re which means it requires more water than what I am able to provide. Mm -hmm. So it's not a rainfall kind of, you know, this, our place is 600 millimeter annual rainfall average, which is not the correct thing to do. But because I like the shoka I have planted, fortunately it's not died. Two of them are there. Both of them are, I can't say doing well, they are surviving, but clearly water stressed. This is our uh, kapok tree, uh, white silk cotton. This is a basically Brazilian uh, native tree. White silk cotton. White silk cotton. Yeah, oh. burga da hati, bili burga. Okay, you, here you can we can see, I guess. Uh, yes, you can see. You can see this is the burga hati, mm -hmm. which uh, disperse, and this is the pod, which has fallen from last years. So of course there are plenty of seeds, and now as I said, this is one of the. It's difficult to open it, but mm -hmm. you can see the opened one. Here is the. Uh, this is the burga hati. Uh -huh. There will be seeds in this. And I, this is, it will open up and this will fly off. Mm -hmm. It disperses with the air. air. And with that, this is the seed. Seed will also go and plonk itself in a better place where it can germinate. This mm -hmm. is the seed of white silk cotton. But this is not a native Indian tree. This is a Brazilian tree, a South American tree, which has come here. Of course, it's naturalized here as good as a native tree. Uh, but the real, not real, I would say the native variety of silk cotton is this. 
Oh. This is uh, you have both. Yes, we have both the varieties. This is called uh, Shalmali in uh, Sanskrit. Oh. Uh, in Kannada, it's called Kempu Burga da Hatti. Kempu Burga. It is fully thorn that was completely smooth and green. Yeah. This is in contrast to that. This is completely brown and fully thorn. Uh, this leaves you can see in this season, but at the end of uh, winter. Rather, end of monsoon when the winter comes, the the tree sheds all its leaves, and then it produces such a big flower, red mm -hmm. color. Uh, it has been mentioned in various scriptures, even in uh, our uh, ancient Indian scriptures. Uh, these the beauty of these flowers is they have a lot of nectar. Right now you can't see the flowers; you can see only in December, January, February, huge ones. It's called what? Uh, I forget that it's called some somebody told me it's called Akasha Kamala or something like it's like Akasha Kamala, Kamala but uh, uh, growing up what, yeah, yeah up there on the trees this uh -huh. big large uh, flowers uh, it's a major source of nectar for mm -hmm. birds there is a particular bird particular species of birds called uh, rosy starlings they come all the way from central america central africa ayo uh, central asia iran they come all the way every year migrating to our country. One of the attractions for that is the flower of this Shalmali flowers. Shalmali flowers. Because of tremendous amount of nectar. Normally bird watchers go to forest, look for a Shalmali tree, hang around that during Shalmali and the other one is Butya Manusparma, that is uh, Mutga. These are the two trees which will uh, you know, attract a lot of birds because of the uh, food they give to birds. So that rosy pastor in particular comes for this. Of course, so wood is not very strong or anything. It's a, uh, told you, it's like uh, not very strong wood. It's been also planted by you yourself or? This we planted, yes. Here, more or less everything you see, we have planted. Okay. Uh, except for neem and few other uh, plants like uh, niloptica, mm -hmm. uh, albizia amara. I'll show you that albizia amara there. Uh, more, all of them have been planted. This is uh, a stingless bee. It's a small bee. You can see honey bee. Uh, it's, it makes its nest in this abandoned uh, termite uh, it is not stingless, nest. I guess. It may sting, is it? I yeah, don't know it this. Has. Mm. So, but these are, uh, I mean, this is one of those honey bees which makes its hive on the ground or under the ground, yeah. sort of. So, this is a naturally bee, grown. Termite, Term this one. Yeah, termite mound which has been abandoned. Mm -hmm. Means now they have left the uh, mound. Uh, we normally have about uh, five to six uh, beehives on our land. Okay. Different kinds. There are at least three different kinds I have seen. Mm -hmm. I don't know the technical names, but uh, at least three types of beehives I have seen in this place. So super. Hmm? So you are not taking any of the honey from it. No, we don't. As such, they're so small, and we we haven't taken any honey till now. Hmm. 